Here we are talking about the Heckscher-Rollin model. It's named after two economists, Eli Heckscher and Bertil Olin, both of them Swedish economists who lived at the beginning of the 20th century, and Bertil Olin was later awarded the Nobel Prize for his work in the theory of international trade. So what is this heckscher olin model? It helps us predict a country's pattern of trade based on its endowment of factors of production. So what's a country's pattern of trade? Country's pattern of trade is its composition of exports and imports. What is it exporting? What is it importing? Endowment of factors of production is what kind of factors of production does the country have? Labor, capital, and in what proportion? Is it, does it have a lot of labor? Does it have a lot of capital, etc.? And based on a country's resource endowments, the heckscher olin model helps us predict what kind of goods and services a country is going to export and import. In particular, the heckscher olin model says the following. A country will export goods that are intensive in its relatively abundant factor and will import goods that are intensive in its relatively scarce factor. Now, what is this uh, intensive in its relatively abundant factor, abundant factor? Well, that is what I'm going to define next. So let's assume that there are two countries, let's call them A and B. There are two goods, let's call them X and Y. And those two goods are produced using two factors of production, K, which stands for capital, and L, which stands for labor. Now suppose this inequality is true. Then we would say that country A is the relatively capital abundant country. So what exactly is this inequality saying? So first, let's try to understand what these symbols mean. K subscript A refers to the total amount of capital, the capital endowment of country A. Similarly, L subscript A refers to the total endowment of labor, that is the total amount of labor in country A. And K subscript B and L subscript B refer to the same things in country B. So what is this K subscript A or L subscript A telling us? What is this ratio telling us? It is telling us the capital labor ratio in country A. It is also telling us the amount of capital in country A per worker or unit of labor. How much capital there is per worker in country A. And similarly, this ratio is telling us the amount of capital in country B per worker in country B. So if there is more capital in country A relative to labor, then we say that country A is a relatively capital abundant country. Note that we are not merely comparing the absolute levels of capital in country A and B. What we are comparing is the capital per worker or the capital labor ratio in the two countries. Now, if this inequality is true, then it follows that this inequality is true. Okay, You can do a little bit of algebra to arrive at this inequality. It's basically the fractions that are flipped and the inequality sign has also been flipped. So now this is telling you the amount of labor per unit of capital in country A and similarly the same thing in country B. So what is this inequality showing us? It's showing us that in country B, there is more labor per capital than in country A, which means that B is the relatively labor abundant country. So if one country is capital abundant in this model, the other is automatically a labor abundant country. Once again, we are not comparing merely the total amount of labor in the two countries. What we are comparing is the labor divided by the capital in the two countries. Okay, now let's take the goods X and Y. If this inequality is true, then we say that X 
is the relatively capital intensive good. So now once again, what are these symbols telling us? K subscript X stands for the amount of capital used in the production of one unit of good X. Similarly, L subscript X stands for the amount of labor used in the production of one unit of X. Okay. So if there is more capital used per worker in the production of X, then in the production of y, then we say that x is the more capital intensive good. Okay? There's more capital per worker being used to produce x than it is used to produce y. Okay, you need more capital. So x is the capital intensive good. Once again, we are not just comparing the total amount of capital used, we are comparing the capital relative to the labor. And if this inequality is true, automatically this inequality is true. Once again, the fraction, the numerator and denominator are flipped and the inequality sign is flipped. So if K over L ratio for good X is greater than K over L ratio for good Y, then L over K ratio for good Y will be greater than L over K ratio for good X. Okay, so more labor per unit of capital is used in the production of good Y than in the production of good X, which means that cap that Y is a labor intensive good. Okay. Notice that countries are abundant, either labor or capital abundant, and goods are intensive, either capital or labor intensive. Okay, intensive is a characteristic of goods, while abundance is a characteristic of countries. Now according to the Heckscher-Ohlin model, which country do you think will export the capital intensive good? Okay, Of course it will be the capital abundant country and the capital abundant country will import the labor intensive good because remember the Heckscher-Ohlin model says that the country always exports goods that are intensive in its most abundant factor and it imports goods that are intensive in the factor it is not abundant in. Okay? It is not abundant in labor. Okay? It's the relatively scarce factor in A. Similarly, country B will export good Y because good Y is intensive in country B's most abundant factor and country B will import the capital intensive good X. So once again, to recap, the heckscher ohlin model is saying that a country will export goods that are intensive in its relatively abundant factor. Capital abundant countries will export capital intensive goods and will import goods that are intensive in its relatively scarce factor. So capital abundant countries will import labor intensive goods.